This presentation gives you a small insight in, into a couple of open source projects that are, uh, that are joint efforts in the Open Source BIM Collective. Um, the Open Source BIM Collective uh, is a collective of individual open source projects. Um, they, they created a collaboration uh, mainly to work on the boring stuff like hosting, marketing and legal questions. Um, but the most interesting part is that they are committed to interconnect individual tools to a seamless experience. Uh, we hold main projects uh, that most of you might have heard of before, like the BIM Server and BIM Server WebGL Viewer. But there are also plugins to that project, micro standards, and some experimental research. Um, you can see most of our projects on the website, opensourcebim.org. The four main projects uh, are, are already up there. And our page on GitHub, which lists uh, also most of the open source work um, and plugins and experiments. A um, little bit of a, a history, where it all started, uh, bimserver.org. Um, after a couple of years, we created a mission and a goal. And it's, it's the same like every other software vendor, help the industry to collaborate more effectively and efficiently. Uh, but our goal is uh, to create the most favorite software platform. So not the most used or um, not the cheapest or whatever, uh, but the most favorite. So at this moment, most of our users are actually our fans. How does BIM Server look when you install it? Uh, it looks like this. It says uh, that the status is uh, running and it has a version number uh, and maybe it even has a link to the source code. Uh, this is how it looks. It's it's not a software tool intended to be um, used by, by end users. It's a platform intended to be used by software developers. Um, and this is the way we, we see that. And because it's our mission to help the, uh, the industry to collaborate more effectively and more efficiently. But most of us are uh, uh, researchers or uh, students or just people that love to do some coding in the weekend. Um, at least we're not software vendors. Um, so that's why we want to create a platform for others to build something on top. So we don't handle direct end users, at least not most of the time, sometimes we do. In this case we try to make a, a snowball effect. Because when, for example, 10 companies build something on top of BIM Server and they have their own clients, um, it, it creates a uh, a snowball effect when we, when we implement new features. So those new features are directly used by the commercial applications that are built on top of BIM Server. So that's also the reason why we say that our goal is to create the most favorite platform, lowering the threshold for developers to build niche applications. So there are already a lot of applications out there that use BIM Server, uh, but end users don't see it uh, because they don't know it. It's, it's under the hood. And this way we try to help uh, the industry to collaborate more effective and more efficient. How does BIM Server look in general? It's a plugin framework. So we have a, a, a database on the right side. Uh, the core is an Eclipse modeling framework, meta model. Um, and most of the other uh, components are all plugins like serializers and deserializers for import export, merging algorithms, render engines, Query engines, compare algorithm, and model checkers. Um, when you install a BIM server, most of um, most of these uh, components already have one or two plugins in there. Uh, but for example, for model checkers, it's really simple, uh, simple plugins and simple checkers. Uh, serializers, uh, obviously, the IFC import export, also IFC XML, uh, is is there by default. And there's a place to uh, to have some uh, graphical user interface plugins. So uh, they're not in there by default in BIM Server, uh, but when developers do create a graphical user interface, yeah, it can be a plugin for BIM Server. It doesn't have to be. Most interesting part maybe is the remote services and the internal services. Um, I will talk about that in a, in a separate presentation. The way you can connect to BIM Server is through a well-documented service interface with a lot of different protocols. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think actually that's the core of what we do with the BIM Server project. When you download BIM Server, this is the part you will get. This is the part you will see and, uh, and install on your computer. 
as you can see it has a lot of different entrances a lot of different protocols a lot of different er interfaces but there's also uh, on the client side we have client side uh, libraries that you can use to connect to BIM server we have a Java application um, JavaScript PHP so uh, <clears throat> I think this is representing um, what we want to achieve at BIM Server, lowering the threshold for developers to build something on top of BIM Server. So it's not an end-user project, it's not the most uh, the, the lean and best looking uh, project out there, but it is um, uh, very, uh, very intuitive for software developers and the documentation for developers is also as good as possible. So to round up on BIM Server, what BIM Server is, it's an open and stable core for everyone else to build something on top. Uh, the core server features like revisioning, authentication, compare, query, model checking, they're all in there. Most of them are plugins, so they're easy to fine tune and to tweak. We have a lot of open interfaces, a lot of network protocols. Uh, you can pick any network protocol you like, uh, so you're not fixed to just one. Um, obviously, uh, we only use open standards for data transmission uh, and data storage. Uh, our plugin framework holds uh, render engines like the IFC OpenShell project and like BIMQL. Talk about that a bit later. Um, and the only graphical user interface that is in there is a flexible administration uh, uh, configuration. Um, and and it's open source, because in the end, when you want to lower the threshold for developers to build something, uh, to make stuff open source always helps. So we're not vegetarians or not complaining about capitalism. Uh, open source is a strategic decision to achieve our mission and our goals. So just a couple of examples what people are using it for. There are a lot of viewers and, and applications that are built on top of BIM server taggers, um, you name it. Um, some of them we don't even know that exist. So that's, that's the beauty of open source. Um, so in short, um, BIM server is an IFC database and there's a lot of uh, plugin features that you can put on top of that IFC. Um, but the main issue we, we, uh, we are proud of from the beginning is that all the data that goes in uh, comes out the same way. Uh, we store the data as objects in the database, so we don't have to do a translation from the IFC geometry or from IFC in general to our internal model, um, which, which makes it possible to have a very reliable import and export of IFC. Uh, we do not do uh, geometry analysis. We're not a viewer that has to do geometry analysis. We're a server that, that serves and, and stores objects. Um, so that that was always a limitation in the in the first versions and uh, the downside was that when you want to transform IFC to different formats like uh, city GML or Collada uh, you had to do some boolean operations uh, and as a server we didn't feel it was our task uh, to implement that so uh, somewhere back in 2009 um, this guy came up Thomas Kainen and he said well let's make a, an open source geometry renderer. And he built IFC OpenShell. It, it's uh, built on Open Cascade, and it, in, in, in short, it's, it, it parses IFC to Open Cascade to do Boolean operations, tessellations, all that kind of stuff. In the latest version of BIM Server, uh, the geometry objects are stored in the BIM Server database, uh, so they're uh, they can be used for uh, by BIM server developers to do geometry analysis and transformation to different kind of other file formats. So, thanks to the collaboration with Thomas Kreinen, IFC geometry is now rendered during check check-in. Doesn't have to be; it's optional, by the way. And uh, geometry is stored in the database. Um, we have a much better IFC OpenShell has a much better color support than a lot of other commercial tools, um, and there's a geometry optimization engine at this moment in BIM server um, looking to do that in IFC OpenShell as well maybe on both sides um, to optimize the geometry of uh, recurring objects and IFC OpenShell is pretty reliable uh, so it's it's definitely something to look at when you want to work on geometry 
So at that moment, uh, BIM server had a plugin for uh, geometry rendering, and then uh, Reno came along. Uh, he's from South Africa, and he thought it would be nice to build a WebGL open source rendering application. So he built BIM Surfer. It's a CNGS based WebGL application and it links directly to BIM Server. Um, so it gets data from a BIM Server. Um, and because he doesn't have to do Boolean operations on a client that's done by IFC OpenShell, he can make a very nice and very good uh, user interface and, uh, and a nice user experience with the viewer in the browser. So people don't have to install. Uh, client-side applications anymore when they want to view the model from a server they can just view it in the browser this I think this was 2010 or 11 <coughs> then some uh, guys from the University of Vienna came along they did an open source project about sensor information linking to BIM and they wanted to see intuitively where the sensors were in the BIM model so that's the reason why they made some extra features on top of BIM Surfer, like the Expose button. Um, when you selected an object, uh, it, it searched the database what building story that object was. And when you, uh, when you uh, slide the slider to the right, the whole building story came out of the model. Um, and they even made a, made a transparency slider to make all the objects uh, transparent to actually really see where the sensors are very quickly. They uh, uh, they contributed the source code back to the community so from that time it was a very cool new feature inside of the BIM Surfer application. But it was still one big chunk of code. You could use it um, or not use it. It was as is. So in, in the, at the end of 2013, beginning of 2014, the Netherlands Organization for Applied Scientific Research decided uh, to turn this code into a more modular approach. So at this moment, BIM Surfer is, has, un, has undergone a complete rewrite um, from the spaghetti code. It was turned into a modular code with an API and event-driven. Um, so you can build your own WebGL viewer. Um, it's it's just released, so it's pretty unstable. There's not a lot of documentation and not a, not a lot of examples. But when you can read JavaScript, it's, uh, it's it's definitely worthwhile looking at it. Um, so at that time, we had three different open source projects: IFC Open Shell, BIM Server, BIM Surfer. So we kind of made it official that we wanted to collaborate and. Uh, um, had the intention to actually uh, support uh, the mixture of these uh, different tools. And then the others joined. Uh, at this moment, um, some of our most stable projects are BIM Views, which is an open source uh, graphical user interface um, to connect to BIMC compliant services, which um, is BIM Server is one of them. And they also make their code available as a BIM Server plugin. Uh, BIMQL came along, the open source, uh, the open BIM query language made by Reid Mazirak. Uh, he used BIM Server, and from that time, BIMQL was also a plugin in BIM Server. Chris Bogan made some Kobe plugins to import export Kobe into an IFC database of BIM Server. And pretty recent, uh, a BCF server and a BCF forum were launched. Uh, the BCF server is a WordPress plugin. Uh, to create a, a BCF database. It's based on BCF 2.0, uh, but you can also import BCF 1.0 because it's backwards compatible. And the BCF forum combines the BCF server, BIM server, BIM server, to create a dashboard um, to discuss issues on your BIM model. It's, it's still warm and it's actually, I have to say, it's pretty hot also, uh, but it's all, only out there for only a week. Um, and we are finding a lot of bugs in BIM Surfer and in BIM Server, so there's a lot of development going on on this, but uh, when, you, when you feel this is a topic you want to look at, uh, please go ahead. Um, and in the end, uh, we ended up with a lot of people um, that just uh, want to improve the world, a lot of people that 
uh, think BIM tools um, should be tweakable and tunable and a lot of people that uh, commit changes or build something on top uh, make plugins or whatever open source uh, uh, whatever open source initiative they, they think um, they can help some of them are only just do documentation because they are not developers uh, but they feel that this movement is is something that this industry needs some of them are are paid by their employer and some of them are do it uh, just for free because they like it and these guys are actually uh, these guys make the open source uh, collective it's not a project it's the people behind it and these people are part of a bigger picture the bigger picture is that um, we have BIM Server, BIM QL, the BCF Server and Forum, BIM Surfer, BIM Views. We have some experimental stuff on IFD, IFC Open Shell. There's a lot of plugins in this picture, like the IFD Tagger and Kobe plugins. Um, and there are even some promising newcomers, like the BCF Reporter, uh, the Concept Library Link, which was made by the Eindhoven University of Technology for the municipality of Rotterdam. And we're working on some open IFD experiments to build a concept library or an IFD library from a bottom-up approach. All on the fundamental part of research, but still uh, interesting to, to build it with open source tools from the beginning. And we have some honorable mentions from silently died projects like the Java 3D Viewer, the Bill of Material Abstractor, IFC Object Tagger. Um, and before BIM Surfer, we started a, a, a 3GS WebGL viewer. Um, these projects are still in the GitHub repositories but not maintained for quite a while yet. <clears throat> then during, um, during the work of interconnecting the different tools we find that it uh, could be handy to document the service interfaces. So for example the, the link between IFC OpenShell and BIM Server could be a more generic link, um, and at least it has to be documented for other plugins of BIM Server um, to create something. Um, so half of our work um, became documenting interfaces between the tools. Uh, we found that it there was nothing really out there yet, but it could be very promising for the whole industry. Uh, so that's why we uh, we initiated the BIM C uh, interface standards. But we're also documenting more micro standards like the uh, binary interface between BIM Server and BIM Surfer, uh, the BCF server interface, um, which uh, is, is might be becoming a building smart standard uh, at this moment. Um, most of our open source developers are also talking about uh, BCF 2.0. We're very much involved in the building smart movement uh, and we support building smart very much. Uh, but we also think there's a lot of smaller uh, interface standards, API standards that have to have to be documented. So we'll try to document them on OpenBIMStandards.org. Uh, this is not a competition with Building Smart. This is an extra addition to um, uh, to make the value of the Building Smart data standards uh, more visible to the industry. So if you want more information, the best place to go is our GitHub. Um, github.com slash open source bim there is the open source bim.org website but it doesn't give you a lot of information it's more a marketing tool and special for the hackathon uh, we made a, a new project AEC hackathon and uh, had, had a one page wiki with a uh, nice to know facts about the different projects so thanks for looking at this presentation and best of luck during the present during the hacking uh, this weekend or or maybe during the hacking after this weekend. And we hope to, uh, to see you join our movement and build some open source tools.